Watch the complete playlist on the app Pions. Download the app now. A 800 picofarad capacitor is charged by 100 volt battery. So there is first capacitor C1 that is 800 picofarad. In case if you don't know what is pico, it is 10 to the power minus 12. You have to remember these things. Okay. Very commonly used in capacitors. So 800 picofarad, pico means 10 to the power minus 12 farad is charged by a 100 volt battery. So voltage here is 100 volt. Great. After some time, the battery is disconnected. The capacitor is then connected to another 800 picofarad capacitor. What is the total energy stored? Okay. Now listen very carefully because this is quite important question. Here we will make use of a very co important concept also like law of conservation of charge. Okay. And what is common potential? We will see that also. What is happening here is we are charging a capacitor. Okay. Let's say this is our capacitor. Okay. I am charging it with a battery. So this is one wire, this is another wire and I am charging it with a battery. Once it gets charged, I will remove the battery. So now the charge gets stored here inside this. Okay. Let's call it as first capacitor. Okay. What happened? One second. Ah, okay. So this is our one, first one. And first one, once it gets charged, now I took the first one. It has charged now. Now it is connected to another capacitor. Okay. Of same capacity as you can see as per the question 800 picofarad. Okay. This is first one and this is second one. This is the scenario. This is the meaning of the question. We'll come to the numerical later. First, let's focus on what the question says. I have a capacitor. One, it gets charged with 100 volt battery. Once it gets charged, I'll remove the battery. And now in between, in the two terminals of the first capacitor, I connected the second capacitor. Same capacitor, 800 picofarad. No battery. So charges will flow, of course. Okay. How? We will see. Why? Because of the first chapter, we know that if there are two charged objects, they are in contact with each other. Okay. There will be something happening here. Right. We will come to that later. Let's first find, let's call it as V1 or initial potential. So V1 is the voltage across, okay, the first part, which is in the first instant when the capacitor is connected to the battery. So what is the charge get stored in the first one? So charge will get stored as Q, which is equal to C1 V1. Now what is C1? Sir, 800 into 10 to the power minus 12 into 100 volt. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 zeros are there. So 8 into 10 to the power minus 8 coulomb. This is the charge that gets stored. Okay. And let's call it as initial charge. Right. Now how much charge is stored across the first and the second when they are connected, we will come to that. So I hope up till here, this is clear that when you connect a 100 volt battery to this first uh, capacitor, it gets this much maximum charge is this much, not beyond that because battery itself is 100 volt, right? Now, this much charge I am taking and connecting it to the second capacitor. What is our C2 value? Sir, C2 value, let me write here, C2 is also 800 picofarad. 10 to the power minus 12. Let me rewrite it minus 12 farad. So this C2 is connected to this one. So charge, okay, I am assuming because since here they have taken 800 only, what if in exams they give you a different value instead of 800? Like here, many teachers they will first say that since they both are 800, so charges will equally distribute, yes. But what if in exams it they change the value by 800 to 600 let's say or 300 let's say then what you will do so focus here so initial charge is qi and finally the charge on this one must be q1 and this must be q2 i am doing the general situation if it is given not 800 if it is 800 we will see that general situation will also come back to this only what i am about to explain so focus so Q1 is the charge acquired by the first capacitor. Q2 is the charge acquired by the second capacitor. But one thing is clear. This Q1 plus Q2, that must be equals to the total charge initial QI. Here, yeah? because charges can neither be created nor destroyed. They can be only transferred from one to another system. And if the charge itself in the first one is 18 to 10 to the power minus 8, 
they can't be more or less than that they will redistribute so q1 plus q2 has to be qi no charges are destroying destroyed or created in between right so q1 plus q2 is qi great this is our equation number one we'll come back to this okay now another concept here is whenever two capacitors are connected listen very carefully in the parallel this is a parallel combination you are connecting sir what is parallel combination let me give you an example from batteries so if you are going and buying a battery from the market pay attention this is the positive terminal you must have seen that batteries or cells for your uh, uh, clock and all okay so this is plus and this is minus this is also plus and this is also minus right if this plus and plus they are connected like this we call it as parallel combination right and if you connect like in remote okay this is our plus and minus and you put another battery behind it like this then this is our series minus and connected to plus right so this is our series combination and this is our parallel combination so what which connection we are doing here for the capacitors parallel combination because we are directly connecting the two terminals look here positive with positive and negative with negative directly so if they are connected in parallel their potential must be same or they should come to a common potential so voltage across the first one must be equal to the voltage across second one will it be 100 volt no no this time they will adjust their potential in such a way that they will come to a common potential so voltage across v1 will be equal to voltage across v2 and what is v1 let me remind you q equal to cv so v equal to q by c so what will be the voltage across the first one it will be the charge across the first one upon the capacity of the first one and that must be equal to the charge upon the second one upon the capacity of the second one correct let me repeat again voltage is charge upon capacitance so voltage across the first capacitor must be equal to q1 upon c1 and voltage upon of the second capacitor will be charge upon capacitance of the second one since in this particular question c1 and c2 are same q1 will be equal to q2 but if in exams board exams or any other exams if c1 is not equal to c2 if c2 is like 200 microfarad or 200 picofarad then you will be required with this concept listen very carefully so if c1 becomes equal to c2 you can directly cancel them right and you left with from here q1 equal to q2 this is the reason the common potential makes it the charges equal here so since q1 will be equal to q2 let's put it here so i can write it as q1 plus q1 because q2 is also q1 will be equals to q initial so q1 and q q1 twice of q1 will be equals to q initial so charge across each capacitor will be total initial charge divided by 2 now you can understand the mathematical way of the same thing that why the charges are equally distributed because their capacities are equal clear if their capacitance is different be very careful the charges will not be same so what will be our q1 the charge across q1 equals to q2 and that will be 8 divided by 2 which is 4 into 10 to the power minus 8 coulombs this is our charge across each capacitor clear if this is our charge and capacitance we already know can we find the energy stored yes so energy of the energy is a scalar quantity yes so energy the total energy of the system will be equals to the total energy of the first one plus the total energy of the second one what is u1 sir so u1 will be q1 square upon 2c1 plus q2 square upon 2c2 so this is what this is again a formula for total energy stored in a capacitor in terms of charge and capacity because voltage we don't know though we can find that voltage but better is we can directly use instead of making it more complicated we can directly find we already have q1 values and c1 values and c2 values now from here we know q1 and q2 are same and c1 and c2 are also same so we can multiply because these are two same parameters we can multiply with 2 into q1 square upon 2c1 you can also write it here as q2 square upon 2c2 doesn't matter because both are same this cancels with this let's substitute the value of q1 square 4 into 10 to the power minus 8 
into 4 into 10 to the power minus 8 whole divided by C1 capacity. What's the capacity? 800 microfarad. Sorry, picofarad 10 to the power minus 12. Let's cancel out the terms. Uh, 4, 2 is 10 to the power minus 8 and minus 8, minus 16, minus 16 plus 12, minus 4. Correct? And this 4 into 10 to the power minus 4 upon this 200 will be left. So let's uh, divide this 2 to the 200. Correct? 100, let's take it up. So this will be our final answer. The total energy is 2 into 10 to the power minus 6 joules or 2 microjoules. That is our final answer for this particular question.